Hey traders, were you profitable this week? The market gave us some wonderful opportunities. Hopefully you got in on some of those. Our autopilot trading members basically took some profits off the table and uh, we're looking for more upside. But the big but is as this relief rally run into a ceiling of resistance that is going to struggle to get through. We'll see what goes on into next week. Hey, this is Dennis Wilburn, the Active Trend Trader, and it's time for this week's session of Trade Your Way to Wealth, where we show you what we're trading and also give an analysis of what's happening in the market. So let's buckle up. Let's get ready to go and jump into today's session. We've got three great stocks that you're going to want to know about. Let's go. Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Wilborn. Uh, I want to welcome you all to Trade Your Way to Wealth and Financial Freedom uh, in less than two hours per week. I've got uh, our panel today ready for, to pick some stocks and throw them out there to see what's going on. The market, interesting market today. Uh, it is basically, I think we're having some profit taking. However, nobody has really pushed the panic button to go into major sell mode. Now, not, the day isn't over yet, so we still have an opportunity to, for that to happen, but we'll see if that transpires. So, Steve, welcome aboard. Good to be here. And Anil, welcome. Yeah, glad to be here. Exciting days. And so, yeah, it absolutely is exciting days. I want to welcome everybody who's also joining us both live on the Zoom meeting and also um, also on the uh, YouTube channel, Market Tech Talk. Uh, if you are, we're on the Market Tech Talk channel. I am monitoring that. So if you have any comments or you just want to say something nice about us, you know, we can always do that over there. And uh, uh, like I said, I finally figured out the technology of how to monitor both. And uh, so, but I don't <clears throat> spend a lot of time going into that. So who, whoever is over there, say hi. So I'll, I'll know who's there. And then we'll jump into today's session right now. <clears throat> Just a reminder that all materials we do present are for training purposes. Traders should always pay for trade any new method prior to the risk of their own personal capital. The um, market has basically been very rewarding this past week. Uh, we had a great uh, move up. Here's where we were last week. Um, took in some profits this week and uh, expanded uh, note that one, the NASDAQ is still underwater. It is basically the weakest of the indexes that we have out there, uh, followed by the, um, uh, the Russell, and then the, the uh, S&P, and the Dow actually is the, uh, the, strongest of the, <laughs> the strongest of the weak indexes. And so anyway, hey, Jeff, welcome over there on, uh, on uh, the YouTube channel. Thanks, buddy. And so that's what we're looking at. And let's see what um, the uh, potential charts are looking at. Uh, we've got three great stocks and then also a, a good tip. Uh, do you ever wonder, and uh, maybe Neil and Steve have probably wondered this, you know, how long does it take to really master trading? Now, I know there's a simple answer is that it's kind of like golf. You never master it, but you can get really good at it. But I've got some clues that I'll be able to put out there to, to uh, you know, help you, you, you know, coach you up on how long it takes. But Stephen and Neil, just really briefly, how long did it take you to actually get comfortable with your trading? About 15 years for me. <laughs> so okay. I was going to, without really thinking about it precisely, at least 10 years. Yeah. Okay, cool. And probably longer, yeah. Well, and I'm going to explain to you why that it took you guys so long. <laughs> Today. Please, please. And I don't mean that as, 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 as a jab or anything like that. There's a great reason for that. And uh, some of the things that I have, uh, ha have found out, because I'm the same way. I mean, it's taken me 15, 20 years 
It took me yeah. 15 to 20 years to finally get to the place of having a successful <laughs> uh, situation. We're not all aviators. Now, I am an aviator, and it took me longer than both those guys. So, uh, But we'll get into the understand why a little bit later on. So here's what's going on with the S&P. As I said earlier, we're getting a really nice little bounce here. Uh, and this is this whole week. I mean, we basically have Monday, Tuesday, or correction, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the market, after having a very nice upside move and went back into market in, uh, 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 in confirmed uptrend, we've kind of went dead in the water. Now we're getting one of those moves that I think is kind of positive the, and positive from the aspect of, see the TSI, or correction, the moving averages, the eight has just crossed the 20. That is acting as a strong level of support down at about the 407 level. But look what's acting as resistance, the 50-day moving average. We're bouncing up against that. Uh, you know, we've done that one, two, three, four times this week. And now we're pulling back. Uh, and we're right in the middle of the range from yesterday. However, at this particular point, we have not turned down to the downside, but we can get a couple of projections as to where we might go. And we may get a drop, I would say, down to about the 403 level. Things that I keep um, that I'm looking at is, one, the momentum on the TSI has shifted. However, the day's not over yet. It has not crossed to the downside and so this may be a bullish fake out where we're getting a bullish squeeze before going on into a uh, stronger move back to the upside. Oftentimes, these flags like this where you go up, then go sideways, a sideways type of flag is often stronger than the, the ones that pull back towards the moving averages. So we'll watch that. The moving averages are catching up with the uh, price action. And so we'll see if, you know, what's going to take place over the next couple of days. On the uh, weeklies, the momentum is shifted up to the upside. Uh, we'd like, like I said, resistance up at the 50, support down at the 8 and the 20. The, uh, the next one that we want to take a look at is the Qs, the Qs. Similar type situation, although we did not get quite as high, but we're finding support right there at the 820 combo. Uh, TSI has, looks like it wants to roll over, but we'll keep our, again, keep our eye on this. One of the things I have been doing in some of my research is I'm finding that when the TSI crosses above the zero line, that is oftentimes what leads to a stronger move to the upside we can get a pullback back to the, to the zero line and then bounce from there. And that would look like price action pulling back down to for, uh, pass support and then bouncing higher from there. So we'll see if that transpires. Right now, we have a higher high, but we do not have a higher low on the NASDAQ. On the NASDAQ. Let me get rid of that. Now, with that said, on the, the, uh, uh, the Russell, again, stuck in the same kind of range, although we have, I think, what we can call more positive notes here. We have a crossover on the 820, resistance at the 50, when we're getting a pullback. But notice how the moving averages are all starting to twist up to the upside and are in the catching mode. Catching mode is when the, we get pulled back down into the moving averages and bounce up from there. Again, driving sideways, strong indication on the weekly chart that we're getting a nice reversal. And again, we're continuing to pull back down, uh, pull up, pat, move on up with the momentum on the uh, TSI and the market forecast. So we're in gear to go further to the upside. We get a break and a close above the 50, then watch out. We're probably going to go on up to at least the 200 or maybe this past high of 205 
And then there's the 200 day moving average all the way up there at 210. That's a long way away. And so that would be a excellent uh, profit target again, but it'll go in phases. Snap to the 100, snap to this 205 level and snap up to the 200 day moving average. So that's what I've got so far this guy and this week. Guys, it, you know, am I buying? Am I selling? Um, at this particular point, I like the Russell better than the other indexes, but I want to get it, buy it when it's back against the moving averages. And again, it may not be a pullback. It may just be a drive sideways and the moving averages catch up with it and then bounce from there. Stephen or Neil, what do you think? It's eerie because you and I agree a whole lot and that doesn't ha happen often. Um, oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, I, in fact, I did take a small position, a 30% size position, 30% of normal in the, in the IWM today. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no and other, I, I, oh, okay. No, go ahead, Steve. No, no, I, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I, I think the message for me is I expected a stronger pullback given the nice move we just had. Right. And to me, when the market doesn't do what you expect or what it ought to do, the converse is true. So the mm. weakness has not materialized. So that means it's stronger than it appears. And that's why I initiated a position today. Okay, cool. Anil? I have a triple screen buy signal on when? Dow, S&P 500, and Russell. Not yet on NASDAQ, but this is a very good sign. Yeah. It has had has not happened lately. Yeah. When did it occur? When did the signal occur? Yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yesterday near the market close around three o'clock, all of them showed yeah. up with the signal. And I agree uh, totally with, uh, um, with Steve on this particular one. This is in a perfect position. We pulled back in the midsection of the big green candle from yesterday. Let me blow this up just a little bit. Uh, and so our stop loss on this is if we close back down here below the, the 820. And uh, so, you know, that's, it, it's an excellent opportunity there. There's your swing low. And like I said, the Russell, it, we swing high here, higher swing low, higher swing high, higher swing low. And now we're up to a, a, a new high there. So it yeah. is in at least a short-term uptrend. So excellent, uh, excellent work. So let's take a look at the stocks that we are looking at for this week. Now, Steve comes up with LAB, LYB. So what's going on? Okay. What is LYB? Because okay. I looked it up um, on the... Uh, it's, it's on the IBD 50. Um, I've forgotten what it is exactly, uh, what sector it's in. But it's been trending for a while. Um, yeah, so let's see what it says. It is in the. Looks like uh, the chemical, the chemical area. Yeah. Yeah, West West Westlake is also a, a strong competitor. Yeah. Yep. I like, but I like the chart particularly with LYB. It's pulling back right now. I don't, the pullback may not be done, but if we trade higher than today's high on Monday, I'd be, I'd be going long on this stock. It's been okay. a trend, we're under a pullback. It's a very modest pullback if we turn up. And my, my signal for turning up would be trading higher than today, today's high on Monday. Okay, so anything above 109? Above that break, I would go long. Yeah. Okay, so anything above 109.26 with a stop loss, just what, slightly below the low today? Yeah, a couple of pennies below, yeah. Okay, so excellent. Uh, Anil, I, Anil sent me one, a stock that I've been watching also. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, it, it has done just recently a really nice move back up. And it looks like it's going to at least fill fill this whole void up to potentially the 274 level. So what's your, uh, did you buy this today, Anil? No, I will get in maybe around three o'clock. Uh, okay. I did get a triple screen signal on this stock a couple of days ago. So that's a nice position to be in. Okay. 
And uh, yeah, this looks like it, it, it's got a really good potential to at least get up, you know, and, you know, it's in a nice uptrend. So project it out to where it could jump up here to about 300 bucks. I mean, that's, uh, I'm, that's a rough estimate on it. It's in a diversified operation. So they are in a bunch of things. So excellent. This is the, I like this is it. The, I like it. This is a Car Carlisle group, yes? Yes. Okay. Well, mine's kind of simple. Uh, I am still tracking this. I've got, actually, I've got two of them for you today. I want to take a look at Bunge, BG, or Bungie. Bungie Limited. Now, it was looking, eh. It's hanging out right there at the 50-day moving average. Now, it may just implode and move on down and break down below the 50, but it's really darn close. TSI and on the weekly chart is uh, bouncing up at the zero line, which is where you would anticipate a move up. Just full disclosure, we are in BG on the, uh, with the autopilot trading service. And so uh, we're, you know, in that at about, oh, I think, let's see, let me see where I'm in that at. Yeah, the 112, right about where it's at right now, 112.93 is where we're in at it. And the stop is just immediately below today's low or, or this low here on the first. That's one. My other one that I that I, I'm I'm trying to catch this with <laughs> is uh, we're getting a nice move up on it. I and I actually like Zim price action wise better. We're getting a close above the 20 day moving average. Uh, it is running into a resistance area, so I like it. Uh, basically, on a pullback down to about 66.39, 66.40. Uh, this also has really excellent options. Um, and uh, we, you know, again, this is another one of them was on the list of uh, for our autopilot trading members. And we pulled in, actually got stopped out really fast. And then it's basically doing a rebound off this uptrend line here. So we've got a really good uh, morning star type of uh, pattern that happened yesterday. And so we'll see if we push on up. TSI bouncing right at the zero line, right where you'd expect it to if it's gonna go into a larger upswing or a larger move. So what do, what do you guys think? Would you, you like? I, I like it. It was almost my pick for today. Ah, okay. Gosh, that would have been, we would have- what I considered, yeah. <laughs> okay. And that, that would have put you and I too close. I know, man, for I tell you, Steve, <laughs> what can you say? And so, so anyway, okay, uh, any questions by anybody? Now, this is really looking good. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree uh, that, it, that it is. Uh, but again, folks, trade the chart that's in front of you and, and make sure that you are triggering off of the, the, the uh, uh, stock pattern that is your pattern to, to go to the, you know, for, for the trades to the upside. That's the part of the crucial key of that. And I think that's a good segue into just the, the what I wanted to chat with you about right now, what it takes to become a master trader. And so there are a few things. One is one, develop written rules and write them down. Now you can borrow written rules if you want, you know, if you want my written rules, I'll send them to you. Just, you know, send me an email and say, hey, Dennis, send me your written rules. Um, and that's at DWW at active. Active trend trading.com. Uh, go ahead and just send those to me. Uh, or, you know, so, and, but, but please don't just go, hey, Dennis, send me the rules. Tell me where you heard about it. So if you heard about it here on, on the uh, Trade Your Way to Wealth, that way I, I can connect the dots on who to sue I'm sending it to. And then uh, next one. Choose one go-to pattern and master that. Uh, Mark Minavini talks about this. Uh, 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 Mark Douglas talked about this, that basically uh, choose a pattern that you really, really are rock solid on or that appeals to your eye and master that one. And that way, when you see it, you know when and where and how to take action with it. One, recognize that you're going to at least, at least need 100 trades. The good news 
on that hundred trades aspect is that uh, you can do it via simulation. The the on-demand simulator on the uh, um, on the uh, Thinkorswim platform works really well. There's a lot of other simulators that are out there. Uh, I have a tutorial over on the YouTube channel, Market Tech Talk. Please go over there and watch the simulator for that. I actually actually have a simulator there, uh, a, a tutorial there for simulating option trades. Next, paper trade and score your trades for 90 days. For 90 days. Don't, you know, uh, people are so hungry to jump in on trading. They just jump right in with no, con and basically lose money that they don't need to lose. And that's what I want to you know, emphasize to you. When you first finally say, okay, I'm going to start trading real money now, trade half size positions. Trade high, half size positions for at least 90 to 180 days. Yes, 180 days is six months. And, and uh, what you're doing is, is that you're getting to know and experience both the psychology, the emotions, the, the mechanics of how the system works. And then on average, it takes about one to five years. We engineers typically take longer than five years because we have to reinvent the wheel. So now you know what the rest of the story is. <laughs> now, folks with a technical background, we, you know, it's, it's the way we're wired. I mean, we want to, you know, again, we, re, we reinvent the wheel. And those of us who do research on, like Steve and, and Neil both, I know you guys are both great researchers of, of the stock market and what the stock market is doing. Um, that's another reason why it takes us a little bit longer to basically master the trade. Um, I, I you, think if I could add something, Dennis. You can. I would say work on exits way more than working on entries. That's a good one, Steve. I really like that. I like that. I think we, I, we put I think we put 80% of our effort on finding picks and you know finding entries, finding stocks to make entries on. And we spend little time on perfecting exits or improving our exits. I love that. Yeah. And that's one thing about like my 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 uh, uh, rules that follow the six uh, uh, six pillars of, of trend trading is that one of my pillars, uh, pillar number three, is know when and where to exit. And that includes for both profits and losses. You got to know that. I agree with you wholeheartedly. So, and last but not least. That, that, was, that was the breakthrough when I started to get better at exits. Yeah. I would have wonderful picks, have wonderful gains, and then watch them disappear. Yeah. And, and I, I know of very few things that are more frustrating than that. Absolutely. It, it, it's actually expensive emotional capital that you spend. <laughs> it is. When, when so remember, without a journal. Then close it for a loss. That's right. Yeah. Just, and just sit there like a deer in the headlights going, yeah. Oh. So, hey, yeah. guys, remember, without a journal, you can't track your promise and uh, progress. And so for journals, my son did this journal. It's called the, the Trade Journal and Trading Log for the Active Trend Trading Service and System. And what it does is it has all my rules in there, but you can find that over on, uh, you, over on Amazon. I'll put a link in. It's one of the best-selling trade journals on Amazon. I'll put a link down in the YouTube channel uh, link and also when I send out the email on this. And then last but not least, that's basically just about all we've got. Remember, wealth creation is a derivative of, of mechanically addressing opportunity. And one of the major reasons why this statement is so critical to understand is when you ad mechanically address opportunities, it helps manage your cycle, the fear side, the emotion side of your trading. Absolutely. So, okay, guys. Uh, Steve, and Neil, that's kind of all we have for today. You guys have anything to add? Yeah. What's the difference between the mini journal and the regular journal? Size. That's it, huh? Yeah, they both have the same number of pages. Uh, this is a six by nine. This is a eight and a half by eleven. Okay, thank you. No, thank you for asking. So, okay, guys. So with that, that's what we've got for today. Uh, remember, continue. Be patient. Be persistent. Be consistent. 
And um, so, Stephen and Neil, thanks for the great stock picks today. We shall see what transpires, um, you know, whether or not then. Correct? Don't worry about it. It'll be a great week next week. <laughs> That's right. Hey, have a great weekend, everybody. Thank and, you. Uh, Aloha, Thank you. trade nice well, prosper. Here. Mahalo, God bless. <laughs>